Welcome to the Hope Connection. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. In today's message, The Names of God, Part 3, we'll explore the name Jehovah Rapha, our Jehovah who heals. Now, if you're wrestling with sickness or you have a loved one who is ill, I'm here to announce to you that God still heals today. You know, all throughout the Bible, there are instances of our God hearing the cry of his people and touching them with his miraculous healing. Today, we'll look at the three areas in which you and I can be healed. Those who are watching, you've probably heard my testimony over a period of time about battling cancer. I was given a 10% chance to live, but I'm here today because God is well able to heal our bodies. I was healed and you can be healed too. I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 15. We're going to read this book in two parts. First, Exodus 15, 22 says, the waters of Mara and Elam. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. This is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water and the water became fit to drink. Now we're going to read a little bit more in a moment, but this particular passage is very important for us to understand that the Jews had just been released from Egypt. Three days journey out, they came across bitter waters. Water, you know, is a source of life and it's symbolic of the Holy Spirit, but they could not drink of this water. And so what Moses did in response to the need is cried out to God. God pointed him to a tree. He grabbed a branch and the branch represents the cross. It was thrown into the water and the waters were healed. And we're going to go on and read a little bit more, but I believe that is significant for us to understand that there is contention, a lack of peace. Remember the word dis-ease or a lack of peace, a lack of ease was going on in the inner life, in the emotional life of Israel. And many of us who are sick physically, We've got more than one thing going on in our world. We may have a physical ailment such as cancer, but there may also be spiritual things, emotional things that are going on, relational problems. So we'll continue to read in Exodus 15. There the Lord issued an instruction for them and put them to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes. If you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where they, uh, there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees, and they camped there near the water, end of quote. Elam was a place of wonderful water, a palm of calm, and it was an amazing place. Palm trees, shade, all of that. I believe that we are living in a time that there's so much stress, anxiety, and there is an emotional turmoil that some of the cancers that we're experiencing, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease. Some of these things are coming upon us because of the lack of peace and a lack of emotional well-being. 
Now, let's go back and think about what we just read. Mara is the first place where Israel camped after crossing the Red Sea. We've already told you that Mara means bitter. The people began to grumble against Moses. They manifested their bitterness in that moment. But we need to remember that the names of God are of God are his self revelation, meaning he comes to us, he shares with us something we need to know so we can expand our capacity to look to him, to receive from him. And that's exactly what happens here. Now, what are the diseases of Egypt? Well, there may be a number of things. We know there are 10 plagues or 10 judgments that came against them. More than likely, though, those 10 plagues representing God judging the gods of Egypt. But are these diseases what medical examiners have found years later that were going on in Egypt? In other words, there was heart disease. There were all kinds of problems that those who have examined uh, the mummified corpses of the Egyptians say they had a lot of health problems. Or in some cases, bad water itself all over Africa today can be the cause of ill health. Maybe that was also part of the problem of the Egyptian problem with ill health. Well, the place Mara, the problem of bitterness, are professed uh, prophetic messages to us today. We need to be healed on three levels, spirit, soul, and body. Listen to this passage from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is really very powerful. Spiritual healing is becoming born again. Soul healing is in the air of mind, will, and emotions. And the issues that are in that realm, like bitterness and unforgiveness, can be healed by God. Third, there is physical or the body healing, external physical issues. And I believe that all these things are tied together. You know, my mother had a favorite scripture, 3 John 2, verses actually 1 through 3, read as follows. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. And so we have something here. And this is showing us that as we walk forward in God, that there can be spiritual healing, we become born again, emotional healing, and that is released to us as we live in accordance with the commandments of God, and then there can be the manifestation of physical healing for whatever condition is diagnosed or seen in our lives. We must all deal with bitterness. The Bible tells us that every heart knows its own bitterness. And I believe that's important for us to recognize according to Proverbs 14:10. And so the Lord showed Moses that he could not be bitter. His people could not be bitter. And therefore, they had to respond and release unforgiveness and bitterness so that they could be healed supernaturally by the true and the living God. What about you? Do you need a touch from heaven? Do you need any emotional or physical touch from God? If so, look to him first to make sure that you and I have released unforgiveness, have given this over in every area, be it race, be it interpersonal family problems. We must forgive and we must allow God to heal us. Stay tuned. 
We'll be right back. Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 240-845-0388 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Welcome back. We want to continue to talk about Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healing. My wife and I both have been diagnosed in the past with cancer. I'm an overcomer. I'm cancer free today. I've had many other issues. A few years ago, I had problems with the left side of my heart because of how they were treating uh, the cancer with radiation. They hit a uh, part of my heart, had to go work through that. There are other things that come upon all of us. And the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and unjust. So you and I in this atmosphere, in this generation of pressure and tension, we're living longer because of all the advances of medical science, but we will have to fight against all kinds of healing, or I should say we need to fight for all kinds of healing against all kinds of diseases. Now, so major point number one today is what is the road to ongoing health? I believe that we all must follow the preceding word of God. Remember back at Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, when the Lord says, obey every word that comes out of my mouth. So I believe in churches that believe in healing, uh, that we should answer every altar call for healing until your healing is fully manifest, according to James chapter 5, verse 14. And secondly, we must ask for prayer. James says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, end of quote. Now, there are many passages that exhort us to pray for healing and they're laying on their hands, the prayer of faith, anointing with oil, so many different kinds of things. There are instances where one man was told to dip in the River Jordan in order to be healed. God has many ways, and he'll show you what you and I need to do in order to receive healing from him. C, we must believe that we also have the calling and anointing to heal the sick. I believe God wants us to receive healing, to lay hands on others, to pray for others for healing. The Bible says in the book of Mark, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, end of quote. Now, I'm looking forward to the day that I no longer have to fight against problems, but I'm so thankful that I can pray for healing. And the most recently, my wife uh, contracted pneumonia. I had walking pneumonia as well. And we came through that. Cancer survivors can literally die in the hospital by being infected with pneumonia. But our God hears our petition. We got to pray. We've got to believe. It's almost as though we've got to reach out. So the fourth thing, 
letter D that we need to deal with on how to pursue God in order to receive healing is this. Follow him wholeheartedly until the fruit manifests. In other words, do everything you know how to do. Listen to this passage and it says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, Jesus said, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I've just read a lengthy portion of scripture St. John chapter 14, verses 14 through 17. We're going to have to pursue God. We're going to have to pursue healing. We're going to have to believe that it's our inheritance for this day. I believe that at times what we're experiencing is the shaking of the enemy, warfare against us. Sometimes when important things are about to happen in your life, all of a sudden it illness may try to manifest. All of a sudden, you will have problems. I'll never forget before a major event we're about to conduct a couple of years ago in Dallas, Texas, the host of the meeting <clears throat> had to go to the emergency room the week before the event. And I said, are you going to be all right? Can we continue to have this great big event in which thousands of people came? It was covered by major Christian television. It was an awesome thing. This great man of God said, oh, it's just the devil trying to take my mind off of what I'm supposed to do. I've encountered those moments where I was on the verge, on the precipice of stepping over into a victory territory. And then all of a sudden something manifests, something that wants to also tell you, just relax, stop. Don't press through. You're not going to make it. Give up on this one. But I believe that you and I can look to God and he will respond with his healing power. Fifth or E, all healing comes from God. I really need to talk to you about that. All healing comes from God. What do you mean? I believe that God has given the revelation about medicine and pharmaceuticals to the people of God. I believe we're blessed here in America and in places where there are advanced medical systems that we have so many things that can mitigate and lessen the impact of sickness and disease in our lives. We're absolutely blessed. I'll never forget the story of Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, and I was interviewing him uh, at one occasion and he reminded me of his story about how he was at Johns Hopkins Hospital, not far from where we're taping right now. And he had been doing all kinds of um, measures and treatments to people who had uh, brain problems and he was a neurosurgeon, but he felt as though he was stumped. So one night, way up into the wee hours of the morning, he cried out to God and he simply said this, Lord, I don't know what to do. From near here on, I am going to just give up. I can't do any better. He said, from now on, you be the neurosurgeon. I'll just be the hands. He said later on that morning, in the wee hours of the morning, creative ideas started to come to him about how he could perform surgeries that had never even been attempted before. That he was getting insights on how to interrupt the disease processes and to bring health and healing to those under his care. And he wrote a book and a movie was put out called Healing Hands. What about you? What about me? Are we willing to understand that all healing comes from God? 
Every wisdom that comes to the medical world comes as a gift from heaven. It is a manifestation of, of heaven's bounty and goodness and grace. We need to be th very thankful that we live in such an advanced medical society, but also we can still pray the prayer of faith. We can still lay hands on the sick. We can still anoint with oil. We can still call for the elders of the church to reach out and pray for us. So if you're going through heart disease, diabetes, cancer, any kind of stroke, God wants to be the answer to your situation. He wants to be not only your healer, but he wants to be the source of ongoing health and strength and life that comes from him and from him alone. What a mighty God we serve. So before this day is over, this, this program is over, I want to pray for you. Stay tuned. Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 240-845-0388 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Welcome back. We have been talking about the compound name of God, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Let me remind you that all healing comes from God. He is the ultimate source of healing whether it be through medicines of our day, great doctors, whether it's through home remedies, if you will, or simply by the prayer of faith. Sometimes we get the feeling that unless healing is supernatural, that God's not in it. But I believe that God in his infinite wisdom and mercy wants you healthy, whole, to continue on with your life. Remember that there are three levels of healing and it's kind of intertwined. We understand there's psychosomatic diseases, meaning soul and body. There is an interplay there. So we can receive healing in our physical bodies, in our spirit, or our soul. Spiritual healing is being born again. And we often need that one first in order to open up the soul so it can be flushed out the bitterness and unforgiveness and all kinds of appetites and sins are actually broken in our lives so that we can live a godly life. And then there's the place of physical healing where the Lord can and does still heal cancer. Right now at our own local church, we are having an intensive prayer around someone's life who was given only weeks to live, literally six months ago. There's another person in our local church that was diagnosed and told that they would live perhaps only another month, and that was five years ago. And God has touched them with this spirit, soul, and body continuum where the Word of God cleanses us. Now, in order to receive everything that we need to receive from God, we have got to deal with bitterness. I keep saying it, unforgiveness. We've got to deal with these, un, uh, these emotional issues that are often unexpressed, unattended to. If our hearts were a garden, it would be the weeding that needs to happen. In my inner person, very often we neglect our emotional health and try to press on and get everything else externally and physically we can. So walking in health 
is an ongoing process. And I believe that you and I can walk toward the goal of living in health. But first, the Lord wants you to know him, salvation. I want you to pray a prayer with me. If you've never received Jesus in your heart, do that today. Pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. You say it in your own words. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I ask Jesus to come into my life, my heart right now. If you prayed that prayer with me, I believe God has saved you. He's doing a work in your life. And I want you to connect with me. Pick up the phone and call us at the number on your screen. Our team is waiting to talk with you. You can also reach out to us online, thehopeconnection.org, or on Facebook at Grow With Hope. And I want to put a copy of today's message in your hand, and you'll need it to build your faith. And so reach out to us by phone or on the web. But better yet, join us this Sunday morning at one of our services here in the Washington, D.C. area. Remember, we're saving a seat just for you. We'll see you again next time. Thank you for joining Bishop Jackson today. The preceding program has been brought to you by the partners and friends of the Hope Connection. For more information, please visit our website at www.thehopeconnection.org. Join us next week for an exciting adventure into God's Word.